Greetings and welcome to Jeffco Films. Today we're going to talk about a medieval fantasy movie done in 1984, starring Peter Cushing, John Rhys Davis, Sean Connery, and Miles O'Keefe. So let's review Sword of the Valiant, The Legend of Sir Gawain, and The Green Knight. This movie starts out with the king having a big banquet dinner inside this giant hall, and as the food arrives, he becomes pretty angry. He feels they've grown soft, and he wants someone to prove that they're worthy. Riding in on the storm, the Green Knight arrives, as if answering his call. I like that his armor is missing the breastplate, just to show off Sean Connery's chest. The Green Knight challenges anyone to chop off his head with a single blow, but if there's any life left in him, he gets to return that blow, and that's the game he wants to play. But nobody will do it. Even the king has to like step forward and be like, fine, I guess I'll do it. So Gawain, who's only a squire, steps out and does it so the king doesn't have to. And then the king decides he has enough bravery that he's going to make him a knight, and he knights him. <laughs> he chopped off his head, but he doesn't get the result anyone expected. This is a strange role for Connery, but he owns it. These young eyes have seen nothing of the world yet. Shall I snuff out their light? Shall these young lips grow cold before they have tasted life or touched a woman's cheek? The Green Knight gives him a year to become a man, and he offers him a riddle and says if he can solve that, his life will be restored. The king gives him his armor, and along with Humphrey, they head off. They go west for no particular reason. They spot a unicorn and Humphrey advises against it, but Gawain's pretty hungry and wants to eat it. But it's magical, so it disappears. And when they go back to their horses, a tent just suddenly seems to be there. So they go inside and food magically appears. And then a lovely woman. Beware. She is the devil's decoy. Well, am I not fair? What you'll have is my dagger, if this is a trap. A noble knight indeed. She knows of the riddle, but she wanted a price paid for her hospitality and food and drink. And I think Gawain was supposed to spend a night with her is heavily implied, but next we see they're just both heading off to Leoness, where he blows a giant horn. The guardian of Leoness appears, and he wants to kill Gawain, so they battle. Humphrey points out that King's armor is mostly ceremonial and not heavy plated. It's more of a learning curve for Gawain fighting here because this is really his first fight. As they battle, we learn that Gawain is pretty gracious and he gives the guardian many chances to get back to the fight. And after defeating him, he decides that he's going to take him back to Leoness. And Humphrey goes with him, but then a giant fog separates them. My last act as your defender, I bring you. My murderer. Kill him! The guardian double crosses him, but a beautiful princess gives him an invisible ring, so... She's always known that Gawain would come and mentions that Leoness is a lost kingdom. When he wakes up, he starts wandering the castle, and it's not until he hears the crazy queen down talking her that he steps in to help her out. But the queen decides that she's actually going to marry Gawain, and he can become the new guardian. Lynette tells him that he should escape, but he says that they have love, and that's stronger than magic. Man, I miss the days where just smiling at a girl felt like love. But she loves him too, so it's kind of weird. It just met. Gawain and Lynette try to escape, and they have to battle their way through the castle against pretty much an unending number of guards. And it's a pretty bad battle, like totally made for TV. And even her father won't help her, so when they get separated, she just turns herself invisible with that ring. Finally, they do get to the top of the tower, and they're surrounded. She's captured, so she tosses him the ring. And once he grabs it, he's transported far away. Because that makes sense. The Green Knight shows up into the tent and tells Morgan to stop from meddling. And then, he turns her into a frog. You have interfered with my game with your black deeds and trickery. No one bargains with a Green Knight. No one! Gawain marches on, comes across a bunch of monks, and meets a friendly friar who directs him towards a magical rock of wisdom. There Gawain meets a wise old sage who tells him he's not playing the game right, and he offers to put him back inside the game. So when he reappears magically after walking through a cave, he ends up in the Guardian's crypt who comes alive and attacks him. So he escapes and he finds himself in Leoness, but everything's like older now and is covered in foliage and cobwebs. He finds Lynette and carries her out of there, and he puts the ring on her and she de-ages and comes back to life. 
Quinn goes off to get some firewood and he runs into Humphrey who just magically reappears. And a giant army comes by, led by Peter Cushing, and they kidnap Lynette and take her back to their castle. I'll have her. But don't taint the goods, Oswald. She should be worth a pretty, a very pretty ransom. Gawain and Humphrey decide to follow and sneak in with the new recruits, and then they get the new recruits on their side. The Baron's son, Oswald, explains the sword to Gawain, and then Gawain embarrasses him with it. A sword is three feet of tempered steel, with death dancing along every inch, like a dark star. On the very point. So they throw him into the rack, and that lasts about two seconds before they throw him into a cell where he runs into the fryer again. Jonathan Reese Davies comes home, and he's the Baron, Baron Fortebras, and so he has a giant feast and talks about his exploits. And then Sir Bertilek shows up, asking for parlay, and he wants him to stop invading his lands. So Peter Cushion offers him another alternative to war, the Maiden. From this day forward, my people must live in peace. You're the lands are mine! Then it is war. Done. Uh, Sir Bertilek. During this, Gawain and the Friar escape, and then they have a really embarrassing battle in the blacksmith, where in the end he just kind of lights it on fire because it's all hay. Gawain scales the castle walls to save Lynette, and we find Oswald inside her cell, trying to taste the goods, but then a fire starts. What a shitty rescue as you actually cause more harm than good. It looks like Lynette's been burned alive. I mean, I'm sure the story's not going there, but... And then he falls off the castle. Good job, Gawain. <laughs> Gawain and his little rebellion have escaped, but he's pretty depressed and just wanders off. And then Connery decides to drop some random poetry. We, like life and death, both ride the night. Like the full moon are doomed by morning's light. Gawain wakes up and he wanders and he finds another castle, which is owned by Sir Bertilek, and he actually saved Lynette from the fire, so they nurse him back to health. He tells her that he has to ride out and meet the Green Knight, so he's given a sword and some gold armor, and she gives him a sash that's supposed to protect him from evil magic, and then his men randomly appear again. Oswald's riding around leading his dad's army and they run into Gawain and his men, so they decide to challenge him, but instead of fighting him, he sends a champion to fight Gawain, who loses. And then he decides to send another guy, but they're going to cheat this time and shoot him. But they end up shooting their own guy, so they just have a big battle anyways. Shoot him! Herman, stop. Leave the wretch to his miserable end. It may be his last fight, but at least let him fight it fairly. <sighs> Everyone battles, and Gawain wins. And then the Green Knight shows up and says they have an appointment. So all of his men say goodbye to him, and he takes him to his dwelling, where he pulls out his axe and starts sharpening it. Gawain kneels down in front of him, and the knight swings, and it cuts the ribbon. So it's fair game now, he can fight him. Huh. You had your cut, the game is over. What? You tell me when my game is over? I make the rules, boy! And he ends up cutting him, and the knight turns to stone and dissolves into the earth. He gets his answers to the riddle, and then he finds Lynette waiting, but she tells him that she's on a borrowed year too, and that she has to return the Leoness. Then she turns into a bird. Touch my cheek, but do not be afraid. And that's where the movie ends. It was directed by Stefan Weeks, who actually made the same movie 11 years before in 1973 called Gawain and the Green Knight. So, you know, you would think that this would be better than that. I haven't watched that one, but this one's all over the fucking place. The movie was filmed in Wales and Ireland and also at the Chateau Petit Alphonse in France. The director wanted Mark Hamill, I guess because, you know, he's just coming off Star Wars and maybe he was a bit more theater acting than Miles O'Keefe, who the producers pushed for and that's why they got him. In the end, I don't think the script was very good. It was all over the place, but you could really tell the experienced actors could really elevate it and just deliver their lines in a very theatrical way. Miles O'Keefe was a lead in this. He threw a lot of jokes in there. I don't really know if any of it worked, but you know, I think I remember this movie a lot more fondly than I, I, it was. Oh God. 
Was that a dream? Miles O'Keefe has done a lot of 80s movies, and I've enjoyed a lot of them, but he's never going to be really considered a great actor, nor has he won any awards, nor would anybody ever nominate them for him. So I can't say he could save this movie, and being the lead against so many other powerful actors probably didn't help him much. We have love, and that's stronger than magic. Only love can bend fate. And I love you. I've always loved you. I definitely think younger Jeff enjoyed this when he had no idea how to choreograph a fight scene, much like these actors, so I can't really recommend you watch this. But you know, I guess there's still hope out there with that Alicia Vikander's Green Knight. Well, maybe that won't be terrible. As always, thanks for watching.